Oh, Shalom Rastafari again. We had a little bit of technical difficulty and we're going to continue this particular um, reasoning and lecture. We're going to call this um, Astral Theology, Rastafari or Rastafari. We call it Ethiopic since the root of Rastafari is Ethiopia or the Tobia. Um, but we'll call this Rastafari astral theology versus so-called astrology or really it's Babylonian astrology. And true, according to what the particular viewer said, we did make a reference which on the surface could be assumed. But what they said is that um, even though we were being sincere, they as a servant of God felt it, that it was their duty to rebuke us for what they assumed to be um, the violation of that which, according to Torah, is forbidden, and that's the so-called worship of the host of heaven. Now, what people confuse is the acknowledgement of the sun and the moon and the stars, according to what is written. Let's, let's first of all just document this, begin off with scripture. Let's... Let's make sure we document, you know, it doesn't even say astrology as people call it in the scripture. This is another European, um, Western Gentile uh, concept that's very poorly, poorly um, understood or comprehended. So, if we speak about the heavens and the signs of the heavens, there are some sincere but ignorant um Christians or Bible believers who will assume that we are advocating or violating um, Jah's word, Jah's law by participating in some worship or astrology. Astrology and worshiping the host of the heavens as um, God or as one's gods are two different, totally different concepts. And we want to prove this, first of all, by once again referring to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Just, let's just go to the beginning. Bereshit or Berasit, the book of Genesis, the very first book. And Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 says, And Elohim in the Hebrew, or God in the English King James translation said, Let there be lights. Let there be lights or illuminations, we can say, in the firmament of the heaven, in the firm place or in the space of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So there are lights that help us keep time, that help us keep time, right? The day from the night. And let them be these lights in the firmament or in space let these lights be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now, just this one basic verse. I'm going to get into the Torah portion, reading and feeding brothers and sisters. But we thought it was very necessary for us to comment on this. And not so much, it's not trying to so-called... Um, beat up on the so-called messenger or the one who assumed this because many of us also have assumed these things because of our being um, um, programmed in a sense by a certain perspective to the Bible and therefore to biblical interpretation from a Western, white, European, Gentile misunderstanding of the Bible. Now, even though we have to acknowledge there's certain places of um, study of the Bible where certain Europeans or white folks, regardless of race, not a racial thing, but there is a certain social apathy, you understand, or a lack within the Western Gentile and European um, understanding of many things, but in particular the Bible, because the Bible is a Afro-Shemitic book, so there's a particular idiom, uh, way of speaking, way of, it's like slang or way of expression that this is what we say over and over, that we need to understand and to comprehend the context. This is why there's a difference between so-called astrotheology, because look, theo means God, right? Um, 
a, a logo, so a logi means the study of. So theology is the study of God, simply. You don't say all the study of the word of God, but the study of the logic of God from a particular religious school of thought, whether it's Judaism or Christianity or perhaps Islam, speaking of the Abrahamic faith. Now, astral means what? Astral means star, basically to refer to the stars. Now, what it's saying right here in the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible is key, is, is very much key. And we look at God's order, or Elohim, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be He. We look at His order, and then we look at the way we computate time. For example, evening and morning is one day. Thus, if this is Friday afternoon, and we're heading into Friday evening, then when the evening comes, this will be the beginning of a period known as a day. But that's not the way in the Western Gentile and we could say European non-so-called Jewish, the converts to Torah, they understand this. But in the general sense, the day and the new day begins at midnight, according to the world. But that is contrary to God, so that is, is an opposition to what the Almighty has ordained. Thus, those who live in that way are living in the image or the thought or the, they're living in the way of the Gentiles, not the way of Jah's people, of God's people. So before one goes all deep into the Bible, let's look at the beginning. The beginning, what did Elohim, the true God, say? He said that the he said that the lights in the firmament of the heavens are to what divide the day from the night. Now, we already can go to the earlier part of Genesis, and he shows us that um, evening and morning, we find this for the very first time in the fifth verse. And Elohim called the light was day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first Day. Now, in the Schofield Study Bible, as some have been able to see and study for themselves, it's very important that one, first of all, gets a good foundation because it speaks now here about the use of evening and morning may be held to limit day to the solar day, to the solar day. Now, if we say solar and we speak about solar and solar signs, does this mean that we are participating in astrology? If we are looking at the heavenly signs and the constellations and the procession of equinoxes, is that what the Bible, the God of Israel, El Elohe, Israel is forbidding to the people? Or is it a totally different concept that is misconstrued and misunderstood because of ignorance? Well, we say the latter, and hopefully we'll be able to prove that based on the scripture based on the scripture and the right dividing or explaining of the word. But the frequent parabolic use of natural phenomena, you hear what I'm saying? It's saying that there's a frequent parabolic in a parable sense, in a symbolic sense. We can even say in a, in a mythological sense. That's what a parable is. A parable is, in its root sense, a, a myth, a mythos. Now, even the word mythos, if you look it up, it had one meaning from ancient times, and that word mythos meant the same or related intimately to what we call parable, like an example, a symbolic story. But after like the 1700s in Anglo-European Anglo cultures, England and America, this word myth was changed connotatively to mean fiction. Now, that's a modern spin on the true meaning of it. So if you're looking at myth as a fiction, then you're going to miss out on the mystery, the mystery of God, the mystery, because mystery at the root, if you study this, Strong's Concordance, you can go to the, you know, look up the word um, mystery or, 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 or mystery, go to the very root in the Strong's Concordance and the Thaler's, lex the Thaler's lexicon, 
and this is what, what this talks about, study and show yourself approved, just so we can be able to see, well, what does the fact say? Concern, before we run off and say, um, you're doing something forbidden by our creator, and if you say Sagittarius and Scorpio and the rift that is an actual sign in the heavens, then you are participating in astrology. No, no, my people, that's, that, that's, a, that's a misunderstanding. That's an unfortunate misunderstanding of the very same people who up until recently thought that the earth was flat or thought that black people were inferior because they were black. These were people who were Johnny-come-latelys, and they've been growing a lot, a lot of information. And this is why we hear about new discoveries, but new discoveries, things that were new to them, were old to other people. So they've approached the world and the Bible from their own ignorance. And unfortunately, many of us who are sincere, we kind of um, regurgitate a lot of these false teachings without studying them fresh. We assume that the other folks, so-called Christians and others, had it right, but if they had it right, why the world is going so wrong? They'll say, well, it's a Bible prophecy, and so forth. But it's also a Bible prophecy that, that many of the ones who call themselves Christian are false, too. So we can say, well, those who are calling themselves Christian, some of them were false, and we see evidence when we judge them by the fruit. But this is not to really point fingers. This is to get to the root of astrotheology. You understand? What is astrotheology? Now, we want to point out Genesis. Now, we're going to get a little, bit, a little bit more comfortable since we just came in and everything like that. But this point, as we said, was on I and I mind, was on I and I iris, as you would say. So, we're going to come back, come forward to this again. But let's, let's clear this for a moment so we can put down this first quote. You see, because if you believe that we're not to have any knowledge of the heavens, yet be faithful to the word of God in spirit and in truth according to his word, then you got another thing coming. Because the Hebrews, right, in keeping the holy feast, even in keeping Passover, and we know that Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, kept this too. Now, there was another comment that was made too. And that other comment was that um, we should stop worshiping a man. Now, there's a portion of Scripture, uh, which portion of Scripture is that? That's concerning Balaam. I think it's in the book of uh, Numbers. And you probably heard this, this, um, this quote a lot. This is a quote that you always hear people quote this if we talk about his majesty, his God and King of Kings, we always hear people quote uh, Numbers, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, where it says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Right? Now, people say, see, there, it's in the Bible. My question is, well, who says it and on account of what? The very same person that says this, right? And, and here's what is very, so, so very interesting. The very same one that um, says this also speaks a prophecy, a prophetic word concerning Israel in the 24th chapter. And the very same one is speaking of the messianic kingdom that those signs in the heavens are accurate witnesses to it. It even says that the sign of the Son of Man shall be seen in the heavens. The Messiah says that. Christ says that. Joshua, Yeshua says that. Jesus Christos even says that. So if we were not to have any knowledge, you see, knowledge and worshiping stars or things, created things as the creator, well, of course, that's idolatry. But the knowledge, you know what I'm saying, of timekeeping, you see, that is, that is scriptural. That is biblical. That is even holy because the Holy One has said from the very beginning that the 
stars or the lights in the firmament, the sun, the moon, the stars, are for signs. For signs. In what sense? Is it like horoscope? No. You see, that, that borders on, on witchcraft, the so-called horoscope where they're telling you a destiny is in the stars determining what you do because that robs you of free will and looking at the signs as though they are the creator instead of that the creator created those signs and for his people he tells us, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons. So we get to know seasons. Do you know that coming out of Babylon, you know, not depending on the corner, gro the corner grocery store or the local grocery store when one has to, you know, it says um, back to life, back to reality, I have to return to the land, return to reality, I have to farm their own land. You know that knowledge of the heavens is very important, even in growing food, God's way or Jah's way. You see, and so when we look around the world, it's obvious that this uh, virus of ignorance has even crept into many Native peoples because even they do not understand anymore the signs anymore. But we also see that this system, this world system, Babylon as we call it, they invest billions of dollars in high-powered telescopes to observe the heavens. And then in these counterfeit so-called end-time churches that Christ already has warned of and said, you know, this is what Revelation speaks about, the Laodicean is the seventh church. And this is, is basically a sign of the church in this so-called end of the Gentile world time, this apostate church falling away, falling away from what? Falling away from the Logos falling away from the word, and therefore, in falling away from the word, it falls away from the logic. So it doesn't surprise us that there's a lot of illogical utterances when we talk about the heavenly signs and when we mention Sagittarius. We said before, should we have actually said Gad, the space between Gad and Dan? Would you have understood that we're speaking not according to the Western Greco-Roman um, um, redaction or recession of the ancient Hebraic? Speaking Hebraically, we say Gad. Gad would be your Sagittarius, and Don or Dan would be your Scorpio. You understand? But folks still persist. And they say, you are talking about astrology. Well, let's look up for a moment astrology. But before we go there, let's just read this here. And, and, and this Balaam is the one who says that God is not a man. So of all people to try to um, rebuke or repudiate the Rastafari Declaration, you understand, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day manifest in the person of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the king of kings of Ethiopia, upon the throne of David. And all the facts, all the proof proves it. But why most people don't accept it is because they have already bought the false Christ, the antichrist, the false interpretation, that if you were to study it carefully, you will see that it's false. And that's why many folks who be lie even it, you know, saying, are so hopeless and have no resistance against Antichrist because all they teach people is a, give people the placebo. They don't give them the real word. So we call it placebo Christianity. But here Balaam says concerning Jacob, and, and that is concerning us, and Israel says, I shall see him. But not now. This is Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star. A what? A star. Aster, aster, as an astro. A star out of Jacob. Out of Jacob? This is the Bible. A star. People say, well, that is speaking um, metaphorically. So it has nothing to do with what Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 says that God said 
that there are signs and season and days and years written in the heavens. But they, so there's no connection between that. No, they lie if they say that. Because it says, And the scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Now, it speaks here in 24 and 17 of a star. A star out of Yaakov. Right? A star out of, out of Jacob. So, first things first. First things first. We're speaking of Astro, what? Astro is what? Astro is star, right? Literally star, but referring to what the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 14, right? It's very key, Genesis 1 and 14. Now, some will say, well, this really doesn't matter. Well, you go out there and farm. You see, it's easy for folks to say that. And they're depending on other people doing what God said you should be doing on the sun. Instead, you know, we're all congregated in these cities and we're living a very artificial and basically an anti-God life. You understand? Because we live in God's life, we'll recognize that what he says here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, it has an application. So it's easy for folks to say, oh, that's astrology or that is astrotheology, and that is all evil and wrong because they do not know how to decode the scripture and see God's sign in the word. Or they do know, which is worse, and they just don't want you to know. So we have astro. Most will say astrology. We say theology, right? Theology, right? And the theology is the study, right? of God, and we use this loosely because we're speaking the English language, so we're speaking this, you know, English, but we can go to the root, but first we start off where we have something in common, so we have this two-part here, Theo and Logi. Now, most people will say, well, Genesis 1 and 4 also deals with astrology, but now, let's get this first of all. We have the etymology, which is what the word really means. It's really root meaning. It's original meaning. And then we have connotations. That's how the word comes to mean over time. That means there are cultural influences that may reshape a word for the people in a certain time based on certain common experiences. But that connotation is not the true meaning may not always reflect the true meaning of the word, but the different social and cultural influences that have reshaped the common accept the acceptance of the word. In fact, we have this in English all the time. You know, like when people say, man, that is bad. That way of saying bad was a connotation on what bad really means, and we'll say that that is really good, but using the word bad. So the Bible says, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. You understand? And see, that's the kind of confusion, basically, that humanity is dealing with. That's why one of the most important books, I would say, next to the Bible that one should have a good copy of, is something like this right here. It's something like a, a Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. Why do I say that? Because we, we, we're, we're using words, but I question myself firstly, and then when we get certain comments like we've gotten, we question others, really, how well do you know a word or are you just using words because you heard somebody else make an argument that may or may not apply in a certain given situation? You know, to accuse ones of, of, of violating God's law, said we're violating God's law, and two things they said we are we are um, dealing with astrology, which is forbidden, right? And secondly, that we're worshiping a man. Then I asked, well, the person sound like they come from a Christian perspective. First, I said I'm gonna ask them the, the what I call the Hebrew Israelite question, um, and that is based on thirty and thirty and four. 30 and 4 of Proverbs, 
You understand? The one who created all of this, what is his name and what is his son's name? If you can tell. You understand? If you can tell. You know, so now when we recognize that his name, Hebraically, Old Testament, Jah or Jahweh or Yahweh, Yahweh, some say Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahawaha, we have different pronunciations amongst different ones who have scrutinized it. But from our Ethiopic group, we say Yahweh. Well, what is his son's name? Yeshua or Iesus, to say Iesus Christos or Joshua. So we have Jah, the father, and Joshua, the son, or as the Bible says, the Lord and his Messiah. Now, was Joshua worshipped? That's another question there. What does worship mean? Essentially, worship means in the first base way to bow down, to bow down oneself. Who would one bow down oneself to? Well, firstly, to God. Secondly, to the king. Thirdly, to priests or to those in divine and sacred, you know, in a sacred authority. Then the secondary meaning of worship you understand, which is more the spiritual form of worship, is to regard as God. In other words, to, to, to regard as divine, you understand, is an act of worship. And we are pointing to two different words, you understand, when we dig underneath, and it's the same in Hebrew, different words, but the words imply these two main senses, you understand, one is prostration. You know what I'm saying? One is bowing down. Now, we know bowing down on a physical level is, is an outward sign. But then bowing the ego, you know what I'm saying, in the spiritual sense, is another form of worship, saying that I know I know many things, you understand? But I'm going to bow my ego so I can learn and see if what I thought I know or know actually is true. And concerning worship of God, studying the scriptures, studying Torah, you understand? Emptying oneself of their preconceived notions and studying as a babe and saying, well, let me learn, you, you know, not rely on what I think I already know, but actually put that to the test. Most don't do that because they hold on to their cherished ignorances. But that, too, is a choice. So right here, when astro, we get to astro, astro, astro from astron, the Greek, means star. Star or stars. So as this says star, singular, it can also imply stars, plural. So we make this link right here with Genesis 1.14. Now, this Western culture has a Greco, um, Latin, Roman, you know, base to it. This is why most of the words, the primary roots, are either the Greek or the Latin, you see. So... When you study Bible and the fullness of studying the Bible, you have to learn other sciences and disciplines. Like right now, when we are studying the Bible here and it's speaking about the stars, we have to comprehend um, astronomy, they call it, right? They say not astrology, they say astronomy. Well, you know what astronomy, what's the difference between astronomy and astrology? Astrology, let's get that word right here. Astrology means they have astrologia. What is interesting is that under astrology, in the etymological brackets, they actually have astronomy. You know, some people say, well, yeah, astronomy good, astrology bad. They're playing word games on you. This is why you need to get a good, a good, a good Webster's College Dictionary. This is like the third edition, and to study this for yourself, just to prove it, Let's see if we can get a close-up right here. It's down here. We're going to just put our, point our finger to the etymological bracket. You see right here? This word is in the etymological bracket, right? And you see what's right there What the finger? It has astronomy, right, in, in that etymological bracket. I don't know if it's blurred or if you can see it. We might take a camera picture when we do another form of presentation of this lecture. You know, once we, you know, we, we, we then we script this out. This is something on the vibes, on the spirit, to touch on this particular point because we, we, we give thanks for the one, we couldn't remember their 
I don't know if it's a name or kind of a screen name or that they use right now. But ones and ones will know if they've gone to the Ja Law, the Ja Law put down the gun, pick up the Torah video and check out the comments. You'll see that particular comment. We don't know whether it has continued or whether it's, it stopped there. But the point basically being that astrology is the study of star or stars. It says um, historical primitive astronomy. So in the definition, in the connotative definition, they have a bracket historical, closed bracket, and they say primitive astronomy. So astrology is basically primitive. Notice what it's saying. It's basically, so astrology is basically primitive, right? And we'll put it right here. Primitive as Astronomy, right? So basically, these are the same. The, the ending here, this nomos means law. You understand? This means law, and this here means study, this part. This part, as you know already, refers to star or for law as the stars. So though it's singular, it applies to one study of one particular star or study of other stars vis-a-vis -vis in relation or in opposition to that particular star, right? Now, when we go further in this um, so-called definition, it says a pseudoscience, second, the second entry is a pseudoscience based on the notion that the position, positions of the moon, sun, and stars affect human affairs and that one can foretell the future by the study of stars. Now, perhaps this is what the individual and many individuals might now, remember this is a connotative, this is not based on the etymology, which is the true meaning of the words, without any other um, connotations, but the context of what the word actually refers to in truth. So we're looking at is the word in truth and then seeing how it has been um, connotated, you know, in different senses, you understand, know which may not and many times are not true, but it, it shows what, it shows like what I call, it shows the, the social or societal, could be tribal, ethnic, racial, illusions or delusions, the other added elements that people will add. For example, let's look at uh, astrology here. It says that, first it says primitive astronomy. Primitive astronomy. So let's look at astronomy quick, fast. Astronomy means star law. Astronomos. Astronomos. Astronomy. Here they say the science of the universe. The science of the universe the Bible would have in Genesis 1 and 14, heaven, you know, light in the firmament of the heaven, in other words, stars in the space of the heavens. The heavens would be what we call, in modern sense, the universe. The science of the universe in which the stars, planets, etc., are studied, including their origins, evolution, composition, motion, relative positions, sizes. Right now, what is interesting about this is that the second entry for astrology is perhaps what most folks, when they hear the word astrology, think about. So that is at least uh, two, two degrees. It's, it's, it's not the, it's not the etymol etymological meaning. It's basically the study of stars. And they say that it's linked with astronomy. But now what has developed in some schools of thought is a pseudoscience that is based on a notion that, well, where these stars are, this predicts what sort of a life or what sort of a day you are going to have. Well, that robs us of, first of all, God of God's will, and God's will for man is free will. You see what I'm saying? Now, we can look at the stars or look at the heavens, and some things we can tell that it's not directed against one particular person, but it's like storms. It's like when Christ said to, I think it was either the Pharisees or others, 
that you can tell when the sky is a certain color, it's going to be good weather. When the sky is another color, it's going to be bad weather. And Christ didn't say, look at you, you're violating Moses' law. You are participating in astrology, which is forbidden by our creator. No. He said, and, 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 and so it is, but you don't know what the sign, you know, what the real signs of the time, that you can see these signs. You know what I'm saying? And be able to tell, you know, for signs and seasons, days and years, as Genesis 1 and 14, but you miss other signs. If you're able to see these signs, then you should be able to also see other signs. But selectively, they were able to predict weather, predict planting, when the high tide, when low tide. All of this, I think back in America, they had almanacs, what they call almanacs. And almanacs were very important to the, to the earth people, the rural people, the people who had to farm the land, who, who, who didn't have a corner, a corner store to go to. They didn't have a grocery store or, or Walmart or anything else. like that. You know, they couldn't wait on immigrant labor and, and, and other people to farm their food and slave labor to do it. They had to actually work the land themselves. So they had to be able to recognize what the significance of the full moon was, the quarter moon. And when they looked up there, you have to remember, the same one who told them, don't um, worship. See, there's a very key difference. The worship of these heavenly hosts, speaking of, we can even say the so-called astrological signs, this is now the pseudoscience. That's based on the notion that the position of the sun, the moon, the stars, they affect human, human affairs, and one can foretell the future by the study of the stars. We wasn't saying no such thing, you know, that we can predict the future, but it's very clear seeing that we have the science and technology, and even in ancient, certain ancient cultures, they were able accurately to... Um, record ancient events, even when we look at the, 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 the New Testament story of Christ, they have used this same astronomy, astrology, to really prove the events in the Bible because the Hebrews and the Jews, and, and this is include uh, Joshua or Jesus, Jesus, they kept these Hebrew feasts and festivals, which were determined by the so-called hosts of the heavens and the positions, but they did not worship these particular stars or hosts of the heavens, like the sun or the moon, but these were indications when they were commanded by the very same God that said, don't worship the hosts of the heavens. He said, when the moon is the new moon, that's when you begin this time. That's when this season begins. That's what that sign is for. So it requires wisdom than just say someone says Sagittarius instead of saying Gad and someone says Scorpio instead of saying Don. Now saying Scorpio, you understand, is the Greek and Roman Western way. You, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of other additional um, pseudo- science that has been superimposed on that. But for us, there are 12 tribes of the Beta Israel. Do you think it is um, so-called um, a coincidence that there are 12 um, so-called signs of, the, of the, the circle of zoo animals called the zodiac in the Western Gentile culture, but in the East, in God's people's culture, there are 12 tribes. You understand? And these 12 tribes, they correspond to what in the Western um, pseudoscience, you understand, is called the zodiac. You understand? So, first of all, there's a significance. As we just pointed to the verse in 24 and what was it, 24 um, in 24 and 17 where it talks about a star out of Jacob. You remember Yahweh promised to uh, the patriarchs that if they kept his commandment and did his will, they would become numerous. Even Abraham was told, as the stars of the heaven. 
You understand? So we see within the scripture that the Almighty even uses these these um, heavenly signs, including the stars, you understand, and the constellations, you understand, to be a witness. Even Psalm Psalm 19. Please read Psalm 19. This is the heavens declare what? Of Yah, what of Jah? The heavens declare the glory of Jah. But then if you keep reading the Psalms, you recognize where the command, the law is there now as like nomos. Remember nomos? Nomos, astronomy means the law, right? The law, while astrology means the logic or the study. Now, study can take you in the true direction, but study also depends on the will and intent of the heart can take you in the opposite direction. This is why everyone who goes to school or who's educated, the Bible even says knowledge, you know saying, just knowledge in itself puffs up. So we need knowledge, but it's not knowledge alone. We need wisdom. You understand? We need, we need as it says, understanding, but Rastafari say over standing. So, we have astronomy. So we looked at astronomy, we looked at astrology, and what's the clearest link is that when you study this, you see that astrology was primitive astronomy. The difference is that astronomy, which appears to be a more, as they say, it's more modern, it's more based on law, and not based on um, not based on on primitivisms. You see, because we always think that the people of the past they were such heathen and they were such savages, and now we know so much more. But check it out: those same people did not pollute the earth and bring the earth and the world to such a point of destruction. Yet they had very high knowledge to calculate. You will saying to calculate the seasons and signs thousands of years, you will saying, into the future. You will saying, into the future. You know, what the position of different, you know, what the position of things would be. Now, this does not mean that human affairs, the individual, still has free will. You see what I'm saying? And the Almighty has given the human being that free will. So there's a big difference of recognizing that the, 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 the sun, the moon, and the stars are for signs and seasons, days and years, as it says right here in Genesis 1 and 14. Now it says that a star, right, shall rise out of Jacob. It's interesting now that we speak about this uh, Nibiru, Nibiru, and we might not go into it much right now, but there's a, there's a lecture we like to do, um, it's based on the reggae song, A Guiding, Guiding Star, you understand, that, that Jai Zainai Guiding Star, and it's, it's, it's a very interesting song because it, w it must have been made some years ago. Now we get to learn that in the Ethiopic um, ancient manuscripts that um, there was a particular um, uh, Kokeb. Kokeb is the Ethiopic and the Afro-Shemitic and the Amharic word for star, Kokeb. Let's see if we can put this up here so that we can also have, so we have the Ethiopic um, Kokeb, right? Now, um, we also have Kokav, Kokav. In the Hebrew, they might put it as Kokav. So in the Hebrew, you probably would see it written like that. But now, this word Kokev, right, there is an eighth millennial Kokev, a star of the eighth millennium. And when we now study this with what we know, this eighth millennial star or Kokev really equals Nibiru. Now, remember the Almighty said from the very beginning in Genesis 1 and 14, 
You know what I'm saying? And he says he does nothing unless he showeth to his servants the prophet. So to those who worship him in spirit and in truth, to show us these heavenly signs, we're not worshiping these signs or, or these constellations or whatnot as our God. But in the wisdom of God, you see what I'm saying? It's like Moses. Moses had a staff that turned into a serpent, right? And the Egyptian magicians, they had a staff that turned into a serpent, right? But yet, the, the parable or the scripture, the testimony tells us that it was that rod of Moses that ate up or swallowed up the serpents, you understand, or the rods of the Egyptian magicians. Now, the magicians of Egypt, no doubt, they worship these hosts of heaven. However, Musa, Moshe, he overstood the truth. You understand? That these were creatures. The stars, the heavens are creatures, hence creations of the one true God, or El Elohe Israel, the God of Israel. This is why this verse in Proverbs 30 Let's go to Proverbs 30, 30 and, um, 30 and 4. Um, or better yet, let's just begin from the beginning, and we'll sum up here, because we want to, first of all, just lay a foundation for astrotheology. Some people condemn and, and say astrotheology, this is a new world order. No, it's Bible. It's Bible, and we can prove both the star, the stars, and the study of God based on, there's a book actually out by Bullinger. Um, you probably can get this on the internet. Um, Bullinger is called The Witness in the Stars, where it actually goes through the major known constellations and explains both the Greco, the Roman, and even the Egyptian understanding, or at least what the author knew of the correspondence, and then the biblical script, you understand, and the biblical prophecy concerning this witness, this witness in the heavens. But here we have Proverbs chapter 30. Chapter 30, verse 1, it says, The words of Agor, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy. The man spake to Ithiel, even to Ithiel and Ukam. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. So he's basically humbling himself. Even you can say he's self-deprecating himself. He says, listen, I'm brutish. I'm, I'm coarse. I'm not all that refined college, university stuff. I'm, I'm brutish. I'm raw. And I don't have the understanding really even of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the Kedus, nor do I have the knowledge of the Holy. Now, this is interesting that this part right here, the words of Agor, are here in the 30th chapter of the book of Proverbs that is attributed to King Solomon. Verse 4 is what we wanted to get to. It says, who has ascended up into heaven? Who has ascended up into heaven? Now, if you're familiar with the scripture, you will know that... Um, Hanok, or the Ethiopic Enoch, he was translated. It doesn't really explain the details of it, but later on we have Elias, Elijah, going up in a chariot of fire. We have Jesus Christos, Yeshua, Joshua, actually also ascending before his um, disciples, the resurrected Yeshua. So, but this is Old Testament, so this is really before a lot of this is before um, um, Elijah's chariot. This is before the transfiguration. This is on the Mount of Tabor. This is before the resurrected Jesus ascended, right? And as well as the ascension of Abba Kedus as well. So we have a couple of testimonies, both from the Bible as well as from our from our present times. But it asks the question right here. Remember, this is now this this is now the old prophecy or the not even prophecy, but the witness then the question, who? 
In other words, do you know who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Now, the idea of descent is, you know, people don't want to go there, but the Bible definitely speaks of, for lack of a better word, of a extraterrestrial and alien encounters and interactions. Even this area of scripture where it says, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Now, they would not ask a question like that, especially a man who says that he was more brutish than any man, and he didn't have the understanding of man, he didn't learn wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. In other words, he didn't go to some, some what we call university to have the wisdom. He didn't go to some seminary or studied with the, the rabbis and the Talmud scholars, so forth and so on, of that particular time. But he asked this question, who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Now, if that was not able to be done, then the question would have been mute. But it's obvious that even in that time it was understood that there was a possibility, even Jacob's Ladder, for example, Jacob's Ladder, Old Testament, in the earlier books is another example, or Descendants. See, when we speak this way, people think we're talking about like Star Wars or science fiction or so forth and so on. The question we ask is where do you think that they, the fictional writers, got these ideas from even in the beginning? They didn't get it from the future, but they got it from the study of the past, right? While they kept people on, you know, they kept the religious folks, you understand, in a kind of a religious ignorance, they themselves, we can look at a lot of Christian paintings from Europe where if you look at the paintings, you can see clearly it's like spaceships. They said this painting was, was done around the Renaissance time, and it was done like, like hundreds of years ago, and you can see what clearly what we now know today or acknowledge today looks a lot like extraterrestrials or, or space people or, or aliens or, or, or close encounters of some kind. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? That's interesting when it says, well, who has gathered the wind in his fist? One could even ask, is that even possible? Well, it must be, and it is. But that's the second question. Third question, who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who has bound the waters? Now, what's interesting is that in the New Testament, we have Jesus Christos, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, walking on the waters. You understand? Walking on the waters. I think there's some link between um, um, bound the waters in a garment and, and walking on them. But that's the, that's, the third, that's the third question. That's the third question. Let's go to the fourth question. The fourth question is, who hath established all the ends of the earth? Are there such things as ends or the extremes of the earth? What, what's being spoken about the extremes? It's talking about the poles. You know, we're in a time where it has been said, and there's been some scientific study concerning it, and even ancient proof, and there's there not so much contention that the polar magnetic shifts have occurred before. So, this area of scripture here also implies this in Proverbs chapter 30, verse, um, verse 4, where it says, who, the fourth question is, who hath established, made firm all the ends of the earth? See, some people are looking at it, um, like you say, um, um, was it longitudinally? You understand? Know but it's where the latitude, it's where the poles we're speaking about. We're speaking about the poles. When we look at the poles, Let's see if we have that book, maybe not over here. We look at the polls. Let's see if we, yeah, we have this book, an interesting book, Prophecies, Prophecies and um, Predictions, right here. I've touched on this book before, and it also speaks, it's somewhat dated, because they were looking at things almost going up to roughly 2001. I think that's their, their not only say end date, but they only kind of, forecasted biblically, um, scripturally from natural signs and, and, and you know, um, from a couple of different disciplines. So the Bible is referencing this as well as modern science and, and, and 
ancient Egypt and other cultures from Egypt to India to the to the American Indians to the Mayans, basically showing that there's an amazing amount of correspondence, in other words, um, between these different witnesses. You know what I'm saying? And therefore it proves to us that since we have faith that Jah is just, that even to other peoples outside of the biblical Hebrews and Israelites, that he would also warn them as well for a time like this. So if one doesn't want to accept the Bible, you understand what the Bible says, that's bad, but you have a bunch of other witnesses that actually, when rightly understood, points to what the Bible also says as being true. So you can't accept just what the other examples, and when we prove to you in the Bible, that means that you have a bad spirit, you understand, against the truth of God in Christ, which points to a deeper issue. But here we see the earth.